invasion. More than several hundred thousand Asian women were forced into sexual slavery for the Japanese soldiers. The humiliating title given to them was comfort women. After a staged bombing incident in September of 1931, which was engineered by Japanese officers, the Kwantung Army was able to plant itself along the border areas of Mongolia and the Soviet Union, controlling several thousand kilometers of land. In Sunwu County in the northeast, they would construct large-scale facilities to defend the frontier, station troops, and prepare for an invasion of Russia. In Sunwu, evidence of Japan's occupation can be found everywhere. There are ruins of fortresses, discarded batteries, airports, railway stations, barracks, and power plants. The most conspicuous is a large three-story building that was a club for Japanese officers. In a room, there is a picture of an elegant girl. Her name is forgotten, but what happened to her here, the role she was to play in this fortress and the war, are not. What really happened to her is actually more terrible than most people would imagine. This was a comfort station, just one of many. During the occupation of China, the Japanese constructed thousands of comfort stations and forced young women to work as sex slaves. as comfort women. They were treated as objects. Indeed, the comfort women system was continually present during the whole Second World War, popularizing the now ubiquitous term. The process of forcing women to work as sex slaves for Japanese soldiers, the comfort women system, even predates the Second World War. Japanese 그게 이제 여성들이 또 돈을 벌기 위해서 가는 경우도 있었지만 이러한 게 1900년 이전에도 있었다가 이게 처, 그러니까 국제 협약이라든지 국제 연맹이라든지 이런 쪽에서 국제 조약이 만들어지면서 여성들을 전쟁에 데려가는 것들을 어, 경계하게 됐거든요. 다른 나라를 경우에는. 私はずっと以前に日露戦争の時のことを調べたことがあります。 日露戦争の時もすでに同じような形態が出ていますで日本人の売春婦の人が大量に中国と北の南の方に出かけていって兵隊の売春の相手をしていましたですから戦争があるところに日本から売春婦を派遣するというやり方はすでに日露戦争の
、ですからこれは日本の,あの戦争の一つの習慣というか決まりきったものだと思います。In January of 1932, to hasten the development of the state of Manchukuo, Japan initiated the Shanghai Incident, also sometimes called the January 28th Incident. In order to avoid mass rape by the soldiers, which would degrade military discipline and spread venereal disease, Vice Chief of Staff Yusuji Okamura decided to follow the example of the Japanese Navy in Shanghai. He built comfort stations on the front line and conscripted women into the sex service industry for the soldiers. In his memoirs, Yusuji Okamura admitted it was he who initiated the modern comfort women system. A system that was to expand after the July 7th incident of 1937. The comfort station system expanded rapidly from Shanghai and northeast China to every occupied area, from Heilongjiang to Hainan Island. By the end of 1941, the theater of war had extended to the Pacific Ocean. Later, Japanese troops would set up comfort stations in Southeast Asia. 그 성병 예방이라든지 그 일본군의 성욕 해결을 위해서 해소를 위해서 그 현지민을 강간을 하든지 뭐 이렇게 많이 했었잖아요. 그리고 죽이고 특히 이제 중국의 경우인데요. 그렇게 하니까 치안 문제도 발생되고 세계적으로 많은 비난이 가해지니까 이거를 이제 한 지역에다가 모아놓고 그 여성들에 집중적으로 사실상 강간 예방을 위해서 강간을 할 여성들을 모아 놓은 곳이 이 위안소라고 할수 있는 거죠. 关东军啊，他在中国东北，他当时提出，就慰安妇太多了，浪费了，浪费粮食，浪费警戒力量等等。慰安妇太少，不能够满足日军的性欲，不能激发他的战斗力，因此这些参谋提出了两个比例。一个是一比二十九，一个是一比三十三，就在这个之间，他们认为是比较合理。所以呢，我们估计有四十万慰安妇，其中一半是中国的受害者。In border fortress areas with large numbers of soldiers, comfort stations would be located near the barracks. Almost every barrack had a comfort station nearby. The officers' club in Sunwu County was a comfort station for only high-ranking soldiers. More than 20 comfort women once lived here. Most of them were from the Korean Peninsula. There were also a few belonging to a volunteer group that had come from Japan. A typical room would be furnished with a bed, leather sofa, wardrobe, cosmetics, and musical instruments. 要塞当中，好多地方它是设了慰安所。它指挥部的旁边有水库，有防毒的等等，有有有有洗澡的设备，还有慰安所。所以日本。它这个制度是非常完善，它不建不仅是建在地上，在山里面、山当中，它挖空了给你建一个慰安所。由此可见，这个慰安慰安所制度是非常严密。Information contained in the 1991 Japanese book Comfort Women, as well as details offered by Japanese contacts in 1994. Researchers in Sunwu had reason to believe there might still be some former comfort women in the area today. After three years, they finally found a surviving comfort woman. Moon Myung Gum had been held in Sunwu's officers' club. She was able to identify the room that she had lived in. Several decades have passed, but the humiliation is etched in her memory. Moon Myung Gum was born to a poor family living in Korea in 1919. 
The oldest of five siblings, at the age of 18, she met a man in his 50s. The man offered her a job and took her to China. Moon Myung Gum, as well as six other girls, arrived at the Sun Wu Japanese barracks and began a miserable existence as comfort women. This little road is the road that the Chinese and her sisters were taking. Although this road is not very often, there are also Japanese soldiers 回忆这段屈辱的历史，他来到这个地方，看到这个大楼，他坐在地上嚎啕大哭。但经过他的指认，这个第四个房间就是他当年生活过的地方，度过了五年屈辱的慰慰安妇生活。Like many other comfort women, Moon Young Gum was from the Korean Peninsula. They would be secretly detained in the fortresses after being tricked or captured. They lost all their freedom and were forced to dress as Japanese women, speak Japanese, and sing Japanese songs. Speaking Korean was forbidden. They were required to provide sexual services for Japanese officers for a long time. Altogether, there were about five comfort stations containing about 120 women in Sun Wu. The other four were for the ordinary soldiers. At Dung Ming Fortress, 10 comfort stations have been discovered. More than 1,000 women must have been confined there. In Sui Fen He Fortress, there were five comfort stations and no fewer than 300 comfort women. More than 50 years later, some survivors were found still living near the remains of the fortresses of Dung Meng, Sui Fen He, and Sun Wu. They had all come from the Korean Peninsula. Chinese人 Li Fang Yun of Dung Neng County is the only living comfort woman the researchers are aware of in northeast China. She has broken her pelvis and is unable to walk. Her advanced age has also caused memory loss and her ability to express herself. small village in South Korea, there is a refuge for survivors. This is the sharing house. 
built in December 1995 with funding provided by the local Buddhists and other citizens. The purpose of this refuge is to give former comfort women a home and a place to rest and recuperate. Here you see the scars left by this period of history. Some of the residents gave their accounts of this ghastly system. Life in the comfort station was unbearable. Yi Ok Sion made several escape attempts and suffered cruel beatings by Japanese soldiers. いくたらポディンラボ、いくたらポディンコキがインドだ。ですから毎日多数の兵隊の相手をしたわけです。で、逃げることもできないわけですから、ちょうど奴隷のような形で毎日泣き暮らしていたと。慰安妇在世界战争史上是日本军国主义Wednesday, Yi ok Sion, Kang il Chu, and other former comfort women have come to the Japanese embassy in South Korea to protest the former comfort women system and ask the Japanese government to apologize and provide compensation. December of 2012, more than 1,000 protests have been held, supported by the South Korean government and public. Some Koreans helped to set up a 1.3 meter high statue in front of the Japanese embassy. These seniors, knowing their time is short, want everyone to know that even when they are gone, this statue will continue to tell their story and carry on their struggle.女性として生まれた当然これは家庭を作ってそして平和のためにあるべきですよねなぜ一部の政治家の侵略目的にこれを蹂躙されるんですかあの一つの国が女性の生き方を守れないというのはこれは許されることではないです Within the sharing house, there is a statue of Moon Myung Gum, the former comfort woman of the Sun Wu Officers Club. Mm -hmm. 
Moon didn't return home after having a family reunion in 1998. She lived in a nursing home in Sunwoo, only returning to her hometown in 2000. Kitajiman, 그런 그 시민 단체 기후였습니다. 그래서 나는 비록 전쟁의 피해자로 이렇게 상처를 받고 살아가 살아왔지만 에, 내가 이큰 돈은 아니지만 이 돈을 가지고 또그 베트남도 전쟁이 일어나면서 많은 그 피해자들이 여성들이 피해를 받는데 그분들을 위해서 좋은 곳에 쓰라고 그렇게 이제 기부를 했습니다. After returning to the sharing house, Moon Young Gum continued to live there for six months until she finally passed away. The quietest place here is the Comfort Women's Cemetery. Moon Young Gum was laid to rest here, a witness to a most troubled century, one full of turbulence and pain. She is finally at peace in her native home. August 1945, the Soviet Red Army descended with a vengeance on the Japanese army pulled up in northeast China. Called the Oriental Maginot Line by the Japanese army, these supposedly invulnerable Japanese fortresses controlled thousands of kilometers of land along the border. But in a span of just 20 days, they would be smashed and the fortresses would become tombs.